All right, guys, this one's a different one. Nothing's getting fixed, nothing's getting repaired. So why is the video happening? Um, good point. E-bikes. When you're picking parts off eBay, when you're buying bikes secondhand, when you're building bikes brand new, um, there's a few things I've noticed that's been popping up a lot lately. When I say lately, I mean over the past two, three years. It's people building bikes with off-the-shelf parts and not considering should each part match the other. Um, I'll get into this quickly. It's only going to be a 10 minute video at best, hopefully, um, unless I get lost somewhere. But here we go. So your standard volley market off eBay, 1000 watts, comes with a controller, two brakes, controller, rear wheel, you know the score. And then you've got to source your own battery unless you buy a part of the combo. Um, it gets quite expensive if you buy a part of the combo. And even then, it's still questionable. What's questionable? So the controller is 1000 watts. Um, top of my head if you use ohms law to convert them watts into amps yes it levels out to 21.55 amps for a 48 volt battery pulling a thousand watts um in reality the controllers peak at about 28 amps um they can max out to 30. why am i going into what how many amps a controller uh, pulls from a battery the battery is something people don't consider so they get the thousand watt controller they find a battery on ebay it says 48 volts the controller says 48 volts so a and B must go together. Um, another thing to consider is how many amps the battery you're purchasing can give out. If you buy the wrong battery, it can cause overheating of the battery itself. Um, battery life is an issue. Battery range is also an issue. Obviously, if you put in a battery that was only built and designed to run a 500 watt controller and motor and you're sticking down on a thousand watt, you can't really expect the battery to perform as it's supposed to, as in it's not gonna give the same range as it would have on a 500 watt. It's not going to give the same power. The voltage drop is going to be, quite frankly, insane. And the MOSFETs on the uh, BMS on the battery itself is just going to be peaked maximum. So they're going to get hot, hot, hot. Um, and obviously, these are compact the way they're built. So the BMS is not exactly separate from the battery. It is right on top of them, on top of the cells. Um, so where did this lead me? Bike came in with a 1,000 watt standard e-bike e eBay kit purchased off marketplace basically the normal stuff um so no criticism there at all but i came in for a motor rewire rewired the motor as we do there's a few videos on the channel go back if you want to um rewired that the bike interestingly came in without a controller when i asked why the controller is not installed on the bike uh, the customer stated all the phase cables melted together the controller was in a bag the usual situation again go back on the videos first thing to remove is then connect the blocks as you see in every video i've done they're all burned through um so yeah uh now the battery got dropped off two days later just so i could test the motor before obviously shipping it out make sure everything's fine um i only had time yesterday to check the battery on a bike and take it for a test so the battery left the house fully charged at 54.6 um and it only achieved 8.5 miles till empty now, obviously, that's a bit suspect straight away. The bike never exceeded 25 miles an hour. The controller I mounted on it just for testing is only a 750 watt, so it's underpowered from this original controller, um, but still only 8.5 miles. So I dipped a 1,000 watt controller on there, recharged the battery, took it back out for a test, got even less mileage. And now the customer is having the original 1,000 watt controller put on there. So that leads me to this battery. This battery obviously is capable of more than eight and a half miles um so either there's something wrong with this battery or it's mismatched to the controller as in this battery can't supply the amount of amps that the controller is asking for to get that wheel turning which means this battery is not right for the bike is mismatched with the controller will only achieve half its lifespan and is not going to last no further than 18 months it's basically getting squeezed like a lemon um, not to mention the overheating and the hazard that comes with, especially in these tight confined cases. So, quick recap. The customer said the battery was brand new. Let me zoom in a second. Um, I'll be honest, I had no intention of looking at this battery, but it's a bit concerning. So this battery was, zoom in, manufactured uh, 2022, the 8th month on the 27th, and it's a 13S battery. Um, that also tallies with the serial underneath. Uh, 22nd, 8th, 27th of the month. Zoom in. Thank you. And it's a 13S battery. Okay. 
Now, I don't know if the X25C relates to its ampage output, which means it's only 25 amps. If it does, it's mislabeled slightly, but we're going to have a look manually and not rely on labels. That's the point. So this battery needs to be able to produce 30 amps. 30 clean amps to power a 1000 watt controller. Anything less is no good. So what I'm looking for inside here in particular is probably Samsung Model 35E cells. If it's exotic, maybe 21700s. They give out plenty of amps. Um, yeah, it has to be some sort of decent quality cell inside this to give out the 30 amps. Let me knock this camera out a second. Yeah, and zoom back out. What I'm going to do is unscrew all of this. I don't want no cuts in this video. So you are going to see my hands flash around. There's a reason I don't want no edits, no cuts in the video. Because obviously this is a customer's battery. Um, and obviously if there's no cuts or edits, nothing nefarious has gone on. That's one of the many reasons why I film all the repairs um, before shipping them out. Let me just change screwdriver a second. There you go. So what we're going to do is pop this open. Without being too invasive, we're going to look to see what model cells they are first of all. Then we're just going to have a quick glance at the BMS marking. And we'll be able to find out whether this battery is right for the job. I suspect it's not. Because it is, it is relatively new. Um, it shouldn't be dropping out like that. And the voltage drop from full charge once you smash the throttle literally halves the battery straight away. So that also is an indicator that this battery is not supplying correct ampage to a thousand watt controller. Now I have had a look on eBay. We'll have a little browse now a second as soon as I've got this open at the price of these batteries. Now I found similar a 48 volt uh, 13 amp hour battery for 179. Um, the seller doesn't list the BMS spec as in its output inputs, its safety things, etc. Let me just let's see if I can get this one screw out. They're all stubborn as usual. Put on one more. Hopefully, when we get inside this, it's all sealed nice as it should be. Sometimes they're not though. Always one. Right, I can see blue seal from the start, so this hasn't been played with before. It's fresh. The screws are fresh as well. Let's just unmount this a second. Right, all we're looking for is a bit of colour of the battery so we can see what model cells we got first of all. And then we'll pretty know we'll pretty much know whether this battery uh, spec wise can supply a clean 30 amps. Now, obviously, I'm plucking these numbers up out of thin air. Um, I have managed to pull up the data sheet for the cells. We'll get to that in a minute. Plus, a standard 1,000-watt controller with its amperage rating is in 28 to 32 variable. We'll go through all that in a second, just so we know we're not winging it. Uh, dun -dun -dun. Back to the day. Right, a bit of color needed next. So we'll pop that out a second. This is taped. Tape is loose. No, that's not too bad. We have color. So we have, let me peel this back a second. I'm going to lift this up and bring it up to the camera. And it is exactly where I suspected, I think. I will have to zoom in. These are model SYNC ISR 18650s, uh, 26A, that probably stands for 2.6 amp hours. The um, reason I'm showing you this is these are not Samsung cells, these are not LG cells, these are not Panasonic, these are not Sanyo. These are AliExpress specials. Um, so already I think I'm onto the right track saying this battery doesn't supply the correct power. Let's peel that back a second. Now, obviously, if it was a Samsung cell, uh, Samsung cells clearly state Samsung, their model number 35E, 22Ps, etc., etc. 
So does LG. Everyone likes to put their name on their product, especially when they can put their name on it because it's good. Uh, companies that don't generally don't put their name to a product means the product's not worth the toss. So we know the model of the cells. I'm just going to switch over now so we can go onto the web browser for a second. Where is the web browser? That's a good point. There you go. Right, so we're on here. Let's knock back one. 1,000 watt controllers. All shapes and sizes, all different prices. Now, as I said earlier, if you use Ohm's Law and convert it instantly, um, convert it accurately, I think it's 21.5 amps is 1,000 watts on a 48 volt battery. But these are picking controllers off shelves here. And the controllers also have a variance in them. So if we just click any controller that's 48 volts, let's see, that's 500 watts. We need a 1,000 watt 48 volt controller. We can just dip down in a second. This one's variable. This one runs three types of batteries, but the point is it goes from 1,000 watts up to 1,500 watts, depending on which battery you're running. Let's zoom in a second. That picture's no good. That one's no good. That one's no good. That one's not clear enough. What we're looking for is the writing on the sticker to say how many amps this pulls. Some, yeah, they've also put it in here. In the description, 1,000 watts minimum pulls between 25 and 32 amps. Uh, so that's 25 amps minimum for 1,000 watts uh, motor to start spinning. So this battery needs to be over, needs to give over 25 amps to do its job comfortably, i.e. without heating up, um, better lifespan, etc. So now we need to find these cells. Now these cells are... Chinesium, um, which is fun. <laughs> so finding these is a nightmare. But anyway, sync power 18650 ISRs. There's the model. We'll pull up the data sheet. The thing we need to look for is the maximum discharge current per cell. How many amps can each cell give out? Um, that's the bottom line. So what we got? Maximum discharge current. The maximum discharge current of this specific cell is 5,200 5, milliamps. Put your decimal in there, it's 5.2 amps. So each cell can give out 5.2 amps. Next thing we need to do is see how many cells there are in a row on this battery. Um, and we need to times that by our 5.2. So let's just knock back to the camera a second. And this is basically the best way to find out exactly what you've got. I can understand people not want to do it. The manufacturer should put this on their site. Now I know this is a 13 amp hour battery, so we don't need to go too intrusive. But let me see, if I get my 2.6 and times that by say five in a row, which is where I suspect it is, it gives me smack on 13. So there's five in a row. That's nice. Let me just pull up. So we've got five in a row. We'll take our five. We'll times that by two point. Uh, no, sorry. We'll take our five in a row, and we'll times that by how many amps each cell can give out, which is five point two. Gives us a total of right there five point two times our five twenty six amps. So this battery can only produce twenty six amps. That's one amp above what it's supposed to um in my opinion it's not the right battery for this um the controller is always going to struggle with this battery this battery will only be useful in the first five ten percent of its full charge state um honestly it's a cheap battery there's not much i can say about it but sticking this on a thousand watt bike is pointless um you're never going to get your range it's never going to do what you want it to do I think that's one of the reasons the customer was so surprised when I told them the range of a battery I'd stick on their new bike. Um, they wanted a 28 amp hour battery. I quoted them the range and they was pretty shocked. I think it's because they assumed this battery is how all batteries are supposed to run on e-bikes when it's just not the case. This battery belongs on a 500 watt Bafang and the pulls 21 amps which gives it a good 4 amps headroom, 5 amps headroom sorry so it doesn't overheat. 
Um, the voltage drop is less. Yeah, this belongs on a 500 watt bike. That's that. Never go near 48. Um, this battery was physically hot yesterday after a run. Um, and as I said, I was only running a 750 watt controller. Obviously, the controller peaks to a thousand when starting. But yeah, wrong battery, wrong bike. Um, which leaves us a bit of a loose end, to be honest, because the only part of the bike that was there was the battery. Um, so we'll just have to wrap this back up, uh, contact the customer and let them know. But this is one of their reasons why their bike, when was working, was not really going nowhere. Um, I'd class it as a shop run vehicle. Apart from that, that's about it, unfortunately. But if this was, let's say, Samsung, I should really look at the BMS, but I don't want to be too intrusive. But that does make sense. Well, this marking is 25 on the sticker, which means it's a 25 amp battery. Um, yeah, it's not much to say about that. But this is the problem. If you stuck this battery on a 1500 watt or a 2000 watt bike, the bike will cut out, obviously, when the battery gets half dead because of the voltage drop. But this will get hot. It'll heat up so much. Then you take it on, you put it straight on charge so you can go straight back out again. That introduces another level of heat, another level of power. This is what makes these unsafe, is the mismatch half the time. As well as, now this one's taped up, so it's not too bad. As well as this, I see a lot of manufacturers not protecting the negative and positive. If you can see, the last cell is always riding up and down on these. A few bumps in, the cell shell actually bridges these two, and you get smoke in and flames from the bottom. If you see most YouTube videos with these type of batteries, you notice the fire is always coming out the bottom by there. Most of the time, it's that. Also, the switch and this PCB board is never covered and insulated. Um, again, that vibrates up and down on the cells. All it needs to do is make his way through one layer of plastic. There's no fiberglass boarding in this. None of that. It's just blue wrap. Um, yeah, they do use barley paper on the sides. But when it comes to this part here, that's the part that knocks up and down and bridges the negative and minus. As you can see on this battery, it's already started. That's where the party starts. Um, so most of the fires happen. But anyway, I digress. We'll leave it at that. Bottom line is wrong battery wrong bike wrong controller sad customer right speak to you again sometime guys